Dear students, I, Mr. Vishal Shah, Assistant Professor, Krishna Institute of Pharmacy, Karad, welcome you all to again another session on this chapter Benzene and its Derivatives. Today we are going to discuss the what are the different rules that are used to describe whether the compound is aromatic or non-aromatic. Now we know the structure of benzene and benzene is considered as an aromatic compound. But what are the different rules and what are the different other compounds which are considered as a aromatic also. So these rules today we are going to discuss. Before that just first we will see the learning outcomes. After this session the students will be able to state the rules for the aromaticity. Further differentiate between the aromatic and non-aromatic compounds. So what is the meaning of aromaticity or what are the different properties that are possessed by the aromatic compounds. All aromatic compounds have an extremely high resonance energy. Now in previous lecture we have seen the what is the meaning of resonance energy. Some amount of energy that is kept by aromatic compounds with itself instead of the leaving that energy. For benzene we have seen that it is 36 kilocalorie per mole. So every aromatic compound is having some amount of energy that is kept with that molecule that energy is known as the resonance energy and due to which this resonance energy aromatic compounds are considered as a more stable and that's why they does not undergo the addition reaction instead of that they undergo the substitution reaction. Also aromatic compounds as I said does not undergo the addition reaction rather they undergo the substitution reaction and each aromatic compound is having the delocalized pi electron. Every atom that is involved in aromatic compound is having the delocalized pi electrons. Now just if you look at this particular chart we will see what are the different examples of aromatic compounds. Apart from benzene there are few examples like see naphthalene. This is also aromatic compound. Then furan, indole, pyridine, tropylium ion. See here you can see here there is a presence of positive charge. Here you can say cyclopentadienyl anion. Here there is a presence of negative charge. All these compounds are considered as a aromatic compounds. But here you can see there is another example cyclooctatetrine. This is a non-aromatic because all these compounds looks like same all are having the ring all are having the double bond that is the pi electrons are there then why this cyclooctatetrine does not considered as a non aromatic compound so there are certain set of rules are there which are considered before deciding whether the compound is aromatic or not aromatic so we are going to see these rules so let's begin with what are the different rules that are used to decide whether the compound is aromatic or non-aromatic. So what are these rules? The first rule is the compound must be cyclic. Now in previous slide you have seen that all the compounds that we have seen they were the cyclic compounds. Cyclooctatetrine is also cyclic compound but still this compound is not aromatic means only this First rule is not sufficient to tell whether the compound is aromatic or not. A compound must satisfy all the four rules. If they satisfy the, all the four rules, then only that particular compound is considered as a aromatic compound. Then second rule, every atom in the ring must be conjugated. Means, what is the another meaning of this sentence? That every atom should have unhybridized p orbital so that they can participate in the formation of the pi bond. It may be in the form of the double bond, it may be in the form of the lone pair of electron or it may be in the form of the either positive charge or the negative charge. So this is the second rule. 
After that, third rule is the molecule must have 4n plus 2 pi electrons. So, whatever the number of pi electrons are there, that number of pi electrons must be equal to 4n plus 2. So, this rule is known as the Huckel's rule. Commonly, this rule is known as the Huckel's rule. And the whatever the compound that we have seen, cyclooctatetrin, it is not aromatic because it satisfies the first rule. It also satisfies the second rule, but it does not satisfy the third rule. And that's why that cyclooctatetrin is not acting as a non uh, not acting as a aromatic compound. Further last rule is the molecule must be flat means if a compound satisfy a third three whatever the rules are there and if it does not satisfy the fourth rule then that particular compound is also considered as a non-aromatic so these are the four rules that you re you can remember first rule is compound must be cyclic second every atom in the ring must be conjugated third the molecule must have the four n plus two pi electrons this is known as the Huckel rule and the fourth one is the molecule must be flat so one by one we will discuss what the what are the different examples and what is the meaning of this particular rule so first rule is the compound must be cyclic by looking at the structure of that particular compound we can easily identify whether the compound is cyclic or non cyclic for example you can see here first example here benzene whether it is compound is cyclic yes definitely cyclic compound means what that the all the atoms that are present they must be present in the one cyclic form that is the first atom and the last atom they must be attached to each other here you can see here also the number of carbon atoms are same but this first carbon atom and this last carbon atom they are not connected to each other that's why this compound is considered as a acyclic and that's why this particular compound is not a aromatic. The example is 1,3,5-hexatrine. Further, you can see over here the pyrrol. Now, this compound is also considered as a aromatic. Here, N is missing. Here, this compound is not aromatic. Here also you can see tropelium ion. This compound is also aromatic. Here, this compound is acyclic. Also, here, you have to remember that not all cyclic molecules are aromatic. For example, here cyclohexene means though the first condition for aromaticity is the molecule must be cyclic, the all cyclic compounds are not aromatic because in order to show aromaticity, all four rules that we have seen, they must be complied and that's why as these particular compounds does not comply the second rule that particular compounds are not considered as a not aromatic or non aromatic compound so this is about the first condition so if a compound does not satisfy the first condition there is no need to check for the second third and fourth condition means step by step we have to see whether compound satisfy first if it is satisfying then go to the second condition if it is satisfying second then go to the third condition in this way we have to check whether the compound is satisfying the all the conditions or not then just see what is the second condition condition 2 is every atom in the ring must be conjugated now what is the meaning of this here you can see the in order to satisfy the aromaticity the every atom in the ring must be conjugated now for example here you can see this is the example of pyrrol pyrrol is consisting of four carbon atoms and one nitrogen atom here you can see the nitrogen atom is having a lone pair of electron now all the atoms that are present in the particular this pyrrol they are having the sp2 hybridized orbital and if the atoms are sp2 hybridized orbital we can say each atom that is present in the ring that atom is having one unhybridized p orbital because we know sp3 hybridization and sp2 hybridization so in case of sp3 hybridized the 
whatever the p orbitals are there they are engaged and no p orbital is present which is having the unhybridized state and that's why if a compound is having sp3 hybridization that particular compound does not act as a aromatic for example here you can see here nitrogen as it forms the four bonds due to which the whatever the sp2 hybridized state is there it is converted to the sp3 hybridization state and that's why that particular compound is not conjugated and what is the meaning of conjugation that there must be presence of alternate double and single bonds like in benzene we know the three double bonds are there and three single bonds are there now here also you can see though only two double bonds are there the lone pair of electron also contribute to the aromaticity so that's why this particular compound is considered as a conjugated atom further here you can see this compound is also aromatic because see here now here there is a presence of negative charge on the carbon atom as well as there is a presence of lone pair of electron so every atom is contributing to the conjugated system by only one way either by a charge either by a lone pair of electron or either by a double bond so here the whatever this particular aromatic compound is there either the lone pair of electron or that particular this negative charge is involved in the deciding whether the compound is conjugated or not also we know conjugated means what that particular compound should have ability to form a pi bond and we know how pi bonds are formed by overlapping sidewise overlapping of unhybridized p orbitals here also you can say as there is a presence of the sp3 hybridized carbon atom because here you can see this carbon atom does not have any double bond does not have any lone pair of electron does not have any charge and that's why the, this compound is non aromatic similarly you can see over here all the ring atoms are conjugated in this phenol that's why it is aromatic further if we change or if we convert this particular double bond into the saturated this carbon atom becomes sp3 hybridized state and if there is a presence of the sp3 hybridized condition that particular compound or atom is not considered as a conjugated and that's why that particular compound is acting as a not aromatic another example here also this compound is aromatic now here this positive charge is required and which this positive charge due to the presence of this positive charge that particular compound is conjugated but if this positive charge is replaced then that particular compound is non aromatic means in order to show aromaticity second rule is the compound must be conjugated and that compound can be contributed by double bond a charge may be positive may be negative or the there is a presence of lone pair of electron so this is about the second condition now third condition the molecule must have the pi electron this particular compound this rule is known as the huckel's rule now here you can see pi electrons that we know this is your benzene molecule this is cyclooctet tetrene now we will see the difference between why this particular compound is non aromatic this is aromatic first rule is our compound must be cyclic both the compounds are cyclic so they satisfy the first rule then both the compounds are conjugated here you can see double bond single bond double bond single bond means if there is a presence of the double bond and single bond alternatively that particular compounds are considered as a conjugated system here you can see how many pi electrons are present over it six and here there is a presence of 8 pi electron and if we have to calculate 4n plus 2 is equal to 6 if we calculate it we will get the n is equal to 1 in this case we are not getting n is equal to 1 so if n is equal to 1 0 1 2 3 4 so if we get a complete number then that particular compound is considered as a aromatic and that particular compound is said to be it satisfy the huckel rule so this is the third condition in next video we will see more examples about the how compound satisfy the huckel rule or not and how to calculate the pi electron this is the most important thing so up to this point just you can remember three conditions 
in detail we will see third condition